that. Let's get started. Um, welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're going to talk about some, yeah, ACF goodies. And um, I just want to start with a brief intro. I'm Damon Cook with Developer Relations here at WP Engine. Um, I've been with Developer Relations almost, almost a year now, a couple of months shy. And prior to that, I was a front-end developer in the WordPress-centric uh, agency land. Um, some of the etiquette, just want to set the stage here a little bit and set, uh, we are recording this and it's already being recorded. Um, we will post the video, the final video up to our YouTube channel on WPE Builders. Um, I usually strive to, to get that up there within a week um, of a workshop. So that's go and subscribe to that channel if you want to share that video out or revisit any of the stuff we're going over today. Um, and be kind to one another uh, in the chat. And um, everybody's probably are on mute. I think we have that set up. Um, so yeah, and if you have any questions as we go along, try to use the Q&A uh, feature, which is, should be along the bottom bar in Zoom. But you can also post questions in the chat if, if need be. And um, we'll be launching a few polls, a few Zoom polls uh, throughout to just get some feedback and get a pulse of where everybody's building and using all these different tools and ways to build with WordPress. Um, and Sam Munoz, our community manager, is uh, in the chat and monitoring chat for, for Q&A, uh, and she'll be posting some of those polls. So say hi to Sam. Uh, yep, looks like the first poll's up there. Thanks, Sam. It, yeah, and... Also, I forgot to mention uh, Ian Polson and I believe Liam Gladdy uh, of the ACF team are also joining us today. So um, should we get deep into any technical details? Uh, you know, I'm sure they would be happy to, to answer some questions as well. And while that poll's running a little, bit more. I'll just start to go over where, where we're going to cover today. Um, we're going to be creating a cooking recipe site. Um, I just wanted an exercise for us to focus around for an end product and kind of see uh, the steps along the way and the decision points that a lot of um, builders uh, have to encounter when they're, when they're building out a site. Um, so we'll create a recipes custom post type with ACF um, and we'll create a recipe type taxonomy and assign it to the recipe CPT. And then um, I'll go into creating a simple kind of uh, WordPress plugin to just house all of our customizations that we'll do. Um, and I'll, I'll actually post the final code up to GitHub and we'll have um, a follow-up post just as a kind of an overview of this event. And I'll, I'll link that uh, GitHub repo code in there. So you can have everything that's that you'll see today and spin up a site. Um, we'll also create a custom block pattern. And I'll be showing the new uh, WP Engine's new pattern manager, which really speeds up the whole flow. And we'll be using uh, WP Engine's Frost theme to, to give us a great baseline, elegant starting point for our cooking site. Hey, Damon, uh, a quick yeah. question in the chat is, will these slides be available after the presentation? Yes, they will be. And they're actually, um, they will be in the code base because these are just all built as, uh, it's actually a block pattern, these slides. so. Yes, I will make them in the final GitHub repo. They'll be available. All righty. Oh, yeah. Let's jump into um, local here. 
where I have a site spun up um, and I'll step through what's what's going on inside. Um, a little overview of the plugins. We have ACF, we have the alpha version, which is available if you're a, currently, if you're a pro subscriber, if you go into uh, the downloads area, you can test it out. Um, this is just for kind of general builder feedback. Um, the beta, I believe, is due to drop any day now. Um, either Liam and Ian can probably speak to that in the chat. But this is the, the upcoming version that has um, custom post types and taxonomy user interface to allow us to register all these things and make it really fast. Um, I have some other plugins. This uh, cooking recipes is what we'll actually be eventually developing, and I'll, I'll step through that. And then the rest are just um, pattern manager. I'll activate later on and, and step through that. And this is just to, I needed this to get some kind of pseudo authors and editors. And this site is actually running um, 6.2 uh, release candidate two of the upcoming uh, WordPress release, just to kind of get all the, the fancy new features. Um, so let me just check my notes real quick and make sure I didn't miss anything. Ah, uh, yes. So since we're creating a recipes site, I wanted to I kind of gleaned some ideas from this simplerecipes.com. And I wanted to grab some components that are kind of common to a lot of recipe sites. Um, so I'm going to scroll down here. And there's a few areas I'm going to focus on, like this, this area, which I'm calling with this kind of green background, I'm calling it the cook and prep times component. Um, so it just kind of shows the prep time. And let me zoom in a little bit. That might be small. So it shows the prep and cook time for these for an, a recipe. And then we have an ingredients list, which is another component. And then the kind of the step by step of, you know, combined dry ingredients, wet ingredients, and so on. And then all the way at the bottom here is the nutrition facts. So those four components. Um, the cook and prep times, ingredients, step-by-step, -step, and nutrition facts are just kind of four components that I thought would give us pretty good coverage of what a, a recipe page would look like and, and you know, build out a, a recipe site. Um, so let's get started by actually going in and registering our post type. Uh, so we have ACF activated uh, 6.2, so we can actually just hop over to this new post types. And I have uh, this presentation is already populated since the, the presentation is running on that. But we will go in here and add our new post type. Um, we'll call it the singular name recipe. Um, and if any of you, uh, I'm sure most of you are already familiar with registering post types, whether it be code or uh, plugins, but um, this is where a lot of these fields are readily available. Um, and if you're ready to get into advanced mode, uh, there's a clever toggle there, which allows you to come in here and start to dig in on all the available parameters around registering a custom post type. Um, so we're going to add a few things here. We're going to choose the featured image and author under supports. Um, or let's see, visibility. Um, we're going to add a little icon to make this stand out in the sidebar here. Right now, there's dash, dash icons, but I believe there's there'll be a different um, icon library available as well in upcoming release. Um, let's see. Permalinks, um, we can enable the archive. We don't need a custom slug for that. Um, and I think, yep, that's that's it for our recipes custom post type. Um, I'm gonna click save changes. And <clears throat> immediately, as you can see at the top here, this is really convenient. Um, we can continue with the flow of kind of how a builder, you know, how, how you might build out this site. You know, you start with a post type um, and then you instantly want to go into uh, 
linking in field groups or creating a new taxonomy. So um, we can link in, I had already created some field groups and I'm gonna actually connect the recipe details here. Pull that in um, and close that. And then we're gonna hop over and create our taxonomy, which we're calling um, recipe type. And we'll call this recipe types. And as you can see, since I hop, it came right directly from that screen, it already populated this post types um, field for me because it's linking right to the recipe custom post type. And uh, I think that's for our, oh, we want one feature here under advanced. We'll toggle on advanced. Um, and we're gonna say that we want to show an admin column here, which we'll, I'll show in a second as we save this, but that just adds an additional column to the admin screen for all the recipes. Um, oh, and it looks like I made a mistake here because it's lowercase recipes. So I'm gonna hop back over and fix that. Yep. Uh, all right. There we go. All right, and there's our recipes post type and the recipe types are even showing up already. So that was super quick, super easy. And I will stop there and take a pause and just see if there's any um, questions so far. Because I kind of, it almost went too quick. And create a custom post type and a tax taxonomy in a matter of minutes. <laughs> All right, I'll keep going. I don't see any questions coming through. Um, so let's see. So here, from here on out, um, this is where it's kind of continue continuing the builder flow of. Next thing I'd probably want to do is maybe jump in and create a recipe. And I'll actually, if we go back to our field groups here, um, I'm just going to preview this existing field group that I had. It's just uh, has recipe time, ingredients. These are um, using repeater fields. So if we go and create a new recipe now, <clears throat> let me close that out. Sorry, that's a little preview of something to come. But you can see you would hop down in here and start filling in your fields um, in the you know traditional classic sense of this is where the approach you know of adding your post meta and then you probably you know start hooking up your template logic to display on a single recipe you know all this um, great post meta information that UCF uh, allows us to create. But we're going to take a different approach because this is we're we're going with a block theme uh, focused block driven site. Um, so that's kind of where, as I'll step through, um, you know, Pat, Pattern Manager helps everything flow together here. And, and as you can see, actually, I've already um, created a bunch of recipes, and this is kind of the, a preview of the final uh, site here. Um, so for next steps, um, I showed you kind of the, the, usually the classic sense of, yeah, creating the post meta and filling it out. Um, but we are going to create a simple plugin and I'll step through the code here. Um, this is going to allow us to, um, register a, ACF custom block, um, and we're gonna register a custom block pattern category for WordPress, so that's core functionality. And actually I'll just step through this, but this will be in the final GitHub. So here we're registering our block, our custom block, which we're gonna pull in for cook and prep times, which was that top component I showed. Um, we can enqueue some block editor assets. This was a simple style sheet I added just to customize the appearance in uh, the new, when you're editing a recipe. Um, this is, let's see, a block category. So when we create our new cook and prep times block, we're gonna assign it to a recipes category of blocks. <clears throat> 
So in the inserter, that's where you would find that block. And then I'll come back to this later, but we're setting a custom JSON save and load point. And then again, here's a simple a, a block pattern category for recipes as well. Um, of course, this is one approach. We're doing the block based approach. There's many ways to build, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong with the traditional templating. And um, so, yeah, let's keep going. And let's see. We'll show how, let's demonstrate actually. I'm going to go activate the pattern manager plugin. And if any of you are already familiar, I'm not sure, I'll try to step through it, but block patterns, um, the current process of creating a block pattern, typically you spin up a, a page or a post, <clears throat> block out the whole page, and then you can use a uh, copy. Let's see if I have, yeah, we could hop in here and say, let me move this poll to the side here. We could add a, you know, an image and just grab an image here. And then typically you would kind of grab these um, from the list view and copy blocks here, and then paste them into a pattern file in your theme, which is fine and dandy, but uh, this is where block or pattern manager really shines. So we have, we activated pattern manager. <clears throat> and since I registered that block pattern uh, category already, we have a recipe category. And I had already created a few patterns here, but we'll we'll go ahead and create another one. But first, I wanted to show um, we can edit this existing recipe. It's a full page pattern, really. Um, it has most of our components are ready to go. But one thing we're missing is our custom block. So I'm going to say insert before. And we can hop over here and see under our custom block category recipes, and we can grab our cook and prep times. And we want that, you know, immediately available. So when a editor comes along and wants to create a new recipe, we'll have all this information kind of um, stubbed out and ready to, for them to fill it out. So I'll save that update pattern. And these, it says here, pattern saved to your theme directory. So this pattern is being updated uh, within the, the active theme, which is Frost in this demonstration, um, which is awesome because we really want this all packaged and, and ready. And, and you know we can version control all of this and, and share it and collaborate. So that is that pattern. I'm going to hop back over to the other one because I want to actually include it there as well. So I'll do that really quick. We'll add insert before, and we'll say cook. And we'll add that in, save that pattern. And I'll actually briefly show you, uh, let's see if we hop into the frost and go into patterns. And we go to, here's our recipe full. This is where it's being saved to, um, as well as all the assets. So, you know, if another common pain point when creating patterns is, Having to update or use uh, you know PHP templating to include these assets, but there are automatically pulled in and saved alongside the theme with Pattern Manager. So that's our other pattern, and we're actually just going to create um, one more. Let me just move this <laughs> zoom bar out of my way. Um, and actually, I'm going to just go back and duplicate leave here. Whoops. Zoom poll. All right. We're going to go back in our under recipes and we're just going to duplicate the simple pattern that we have. And we're just going to do, let's say maybe we want a, uh, a different appearance here. So we're going to say insert after and we're going to do columns and we'll do two columns and I'm going to actually bring up the list into the first column and then we'll do the maybe the step by step in the second column. So that's kind of a different uh, layout. 
and a different, um, yeah, just a different page layout you could offer to your editors if they have a different um, appearance they want to go with here. So, and again, and instantly we have another pattern ready to go and it's um, already under our recipes and actually I probably will, let's see, we did columns. Yeah, let's go back and Oops, forgot to name it because now it's, uh, if we hop in here, there we go, copied. So we can rename this so it stands out a little. So full page, uh, we'll say columns. And we'll get rid of this. And as you can see in Pattern Manager, you know, you can set categories. Um, you know, this one was already assigned to the recipes category. Uh, you can set keywords, some description, and then you can also assign the post type, which is obviously we want assigned to our recipes. And then there's some other options down here to whether it's available in the modals, which I will demonstrate in a second. But we can update this pattern and save to the theme. And now we want to kind of demo, I'm going to demonstrate just kind of the editorial process. So, you know, in theory, we're trying to expedite the flow of any, you know, content editors that are coming in here to create a new recipe. Um, and so if we hop in here and here's the modal, they instantly are presented with these full page patterns. Um, and I'm going to choose just this expanded custom, uh, complex uh, recipe layout. And it instantly kind of gives us, you know, they, a content editor can start coming in here and adding in their information, uh, 15 minutes, um, you know, again, this, this final field could probably be, uh, you know, doing some math for us and save them a little extra time. I didn't go that in depth yet, <laughs> uh, but here you have little kind of table of contents. You can start adding ingredients, um, adding your step-by-step -step of pictures, a little example of kind of a simple tip of what that might look out look like, and they can replace that or remove it. And I'm just gonna, I'll just say this placeholder for now, but let me make sure I'm not skipping any steps in my notes again. Nope. But if we come back over and see kind of the final version of some of the recipes I've already populated, you can kind of start to see how easily this all comes together. Um, some of the appearance things with Frost that I was able to customize, you can do in global styles. You know, I customized some of the templates. I created a, a custom archive recipe and a single, um, I'm sorry, yes, yeah, so here's the, I customized the single a little bit just to, give it the uh, different footer and a little uh, featured image at the top. And yeah, there was a custom archive and then the recipe type uh, had a custom template as well, which I added. And that's easy to do all from within the site editor. So if we hop around here, we can start to see how this all comes together. Um, hop into a this is the recipe types archive, the taxonomy archive. So we can see like all the lunch items, see a, an actual recipe with the, the layout that we had in the complex pattern, which has all our imagery and step-by-step -step and the nutrition facts at the bottom. How simple, how beautiful is that? I'll pause again for questions because I feel like that went fast and I will kind of probably hop back into the plugin to step through some of the, uh, the features of the JSON syncing. There are some questions uh, specifically related to, some of them are being answered in the chat by Liam and Ian sure. about uh, you know updates and beta, et cetera. But uh, Lisa said, can you show your different categories of recipes? Sure. Yeah, um, let's see. Well, I think I just kind of showed the, the pages themselves, but if we hop into the, the back end here, 
You see your recipe types. Um, and this is the taxonomy here. Uh, you know, I created a few breakfast, dessert, dinner, and lunch. And that's the book all coming from the rest of the taxonomy that we registered here. Awesome. And then related, actually, um, Alicia says, or Alicia says, do you have to set a pattern for every recipe or can you have a default pattern for all recipes? Um, yes, you could register a default pattern. So when, um, yes, and we could, you know, the only reason that, so when I do add new, the only reason that this full page, uh, modal shows up is because I assigned, uh, patterns over here in pattern manager. And this is just really using WordPress core functionality of assigning it to, you know, the custom post type and, and making it appear in the modal. But if none of these were assigned to the modal, um, there is another, um, I don't know the, the hook offhand, but you could, yes, set a default uh, pattern to be populated within the recipe should an editor come along and create a new recipe. It would be automatically there and they wouldn't even have to choose it from the modal. Hopefully that answered it. And I don't see anything else in Q&A or in the chat right this particular second that hasn't been answered yet. Okay, great, thanks, Sam. Um, yeah, so I'll step over some of these. Um, some of you already may be familiar with why you would want to kind of use some of this advanced ACF functionality, which is super helpful. Um, but let's hop into this plugin here um, and see how I'm going to close some of this stuff up on the sidebar. And hopefully this, I zoomed in enough. This is large enough. You can see this. Um, but so ACF allows us to set a custom load and save point for our JSON files, which is what I'm kind of doing here in this plugin. There's the, the load point and here's the save point. And what this does is when we're creating in the UI here, when we are creating our post types, our field groups, and our taxonomies, it's saving it all to our plugin. So we actually have over here our field groups, post types, and our taxonomies. And this allows us to kind of package it up, version control it, you know, send it up to, to GitHub or whatever your version control system is, and multiple developers can collaborate and sync this information. You know, you, I think we have, yes, it shows, should you push this up to a staging site, you can sync these items, or if another developer is, has an outdated, um, you know, field group or post type, you can sync that here in ACF. So yeah, that's just a really handy way, especially if you're collaborating in a team environment and building these things. And then let's see, yeah, the custom category. Oh, uh, the custom block, go back there. Let's see, that's up at the top here. Sorry, all the scrolling. So this was where we registered our cook and prep times block. And this is an ACF block. And I can, I'll, again, all this code will be available in the final repo, but it's pretty, it's a pretty simple block. And this is all mostly using, um, WordPress core block registration. Um, ACF allows us to hook in here to set a preview mode and where our template logic will live in the render.php, but everything else um, is pretty much, um, this is where you know typical WordPress block registration starts in block.json. And then here is the, the template logic for the hook and prep times block um, which is pretty, I mean, this is as classic as you get for um, outputting ACF field data, just grabbing the data and displaying it and doing some uh, smart checks. Um, and then some simple CSS I added. That was all I had to add here. And that was our block, our one custom block that we created. Um, 
Is there any questions around that block or those um, JSON uh, hooks that I just demonstrated? Let me see how we're doing on time here too. Wow, we're cruising right along. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we went through creating a simple plugin, a recipe type, custom pose type, saving the JSON to our plugin, the ECF JSON, created a, pat a couple patterns. Uh, well, some of them were already created. I subbed them out before this, but um, That is really all I have. Um, it went way quicker than I thought. <laughs> and really, I think it goes to show how how rapid this these tools and plugins and the system is becoming for this one approach to building a, a WordPress site, build, you know, register the post type, taxonomy, sync it all, have our field groups, and um, get a wonderful looking site out of the box pretty quick. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. Sam, um, I'm gonna check the, the Q&A here and see if there's any other questions. Uh, Tammy in the chat said, can you please show us any additional plugins you are using again? So just to recap sure. on that, please. Yeah, yep. Great point. So we have ACF. This is our custom plugin, cooking recipes of the ACF. Uh, this is actually a single custom block pull uh, that I pulled in. And that was just for them and kind of, uh, sorry, hopping around here. Let me open this up over it's for the front end. I'll show you where that's pulled in. That's just allowing us to have this uh, newsletter form block in the footer. That's what the, the Gutina newsletter uh, block is doing. Um, Pattern Manager, which we demonstrated. I uh, have WordPress beta tester. This is just allowing us to run the latest uh, 6.2 release candidate. Um, and then the simple local avatars, which I use to um, just create some kind of pseudo authors to give a better demonstration of and just attach some kind of random pictures I found. Uh, and that gives us, if we go into like a single um, recipe item here. Yeah, so that gives us a little output here. So you didn't have to see my face on all those posts. <laughs> Awesome. Um, Damon, there's another question. Uh, I kind of like another recap question. Uh, Hannah says, can you go through be best practices for making custom blocks using ACF again? So just clarification sure. on that, please. Sure. Um, and that's something where we'll, I'm definitely, we're, I'm working on with the team and we're going to try to, to um, organize the, the block documentation a little bit because it, it's a little scattered right now. Um, but yes, so I can step through some of the, the functionality. This is where we're registering, and this is using a WordPress um, core hook. We're just, uh, this is early in the life cycle, so we're doing an add action on init, and then we're registering a, our uh, block, and this is actually pointing directly to the block.json here. There's a few ways to use this. Uh, register block type. You can. Uh, you don't have to reference the the file directly, but I chose to. So that's telling WordPress that we want to register a new block, and then the heart of it really is in the block.json. And to not, I guess, probably not go into too de too much detail. I mean, most of these this information around what all these keys that are available in the block.json and I, you know, I certainly don't have them all in here, um, but you can, I can link to that in the, probably in the, the video, recorded video, as well as the post that we'll make for a follow-up to this event. 
but you can find these all online, um, all the keys that are available. But this is, um, you know, everything in this file is WordPress core, except for this um, object here, which is just ACF where ACF hooks in and tells a render template. And then this is the, the when you're editing in the editor, there's a few different, there's I think auto edit and preview mode. So you can say which mode by default you want uh, to show for a block. And that uh, that documentation is definitely available on those different modes. Um, here is the styling. So I think as of WordPress 6.1, or it might be the upcom upcoming 6.2, which I'm running the release candidate for, you can pass an array of uh, different uh, either slugs or files to basically in queue with your block. And so I have a custom uh, style sheet here, which is located you know, right alongside the block. Um, I'm pulling in two other uh, WordPress core um, style sheets that are already registered. I'm just in, in saying that we depend on them because our final markup is using, you know, a group block and the group block actually, I think, relies upon this block supports. Um, so that just allows us to leverage what's already available in WordPress core for our styling. And really all we needed was three lines of CSS to, uh, for our custom block. And as far as the fields, oh, I think I, yes, that's a great point. And something I kind of skipped over was how the fields are registered. And let me hop back in and go to our field group. And this, here's the cook and prep times uh, fields. And really we're just using the location. You know, I created my fields as usual. Um, and then just assigned it here under block is equal to cook and prep times. And once I save this, it syncs to the plugin and creates the JSON file. So um, we can even deactivate, you know, ACF. It's pretty common to, let's see, at the end of the day, I think I had this down here and I was going to demonstrate. There's a few other additional hooks. And I'll, let me actually break this out a little bit. Um, if we want to, you know, push, say we're all done with our site and we push this up and we don't want the, you know, editors on the site to be able to modify some of our field groups. Um, we can uh, pass along this filter that will hide all of ACF. Um, so let's see. Oh, no. Why is it still showing? <laughs> I must be using a wrong filter. I thought I had, um, let's see. Enable post type, show admin, return false. Oh, uh, oh, might not hurt to break it out of this condition, although I think that should be fine. Um, yeah, I think I have the wrong um, hook here to hide that. I'm sure Liam or Ian, oh, no, now it's gone. Yep. So say we're on production now. We don't want, you know, users to modify any of our custom post types or field groups. We can hide that and still have all the functionality that we had and even go and create, you know, add new recipe, grab our pattern, and even modify our block here. all still functioning. And this is, um, here is the, the ACF mode key that was, I referenced in the ACF, in the block.json. Um, so if we change this to auto, which is the default, and let me save this. Um, so we can kind of see the different versions. If we publish that, come back in, So now we're set to auto. So auto, this is how auto handles its 
it shows a preview. And then if you click on the block, it goes into edit mode. So we can add some values here. And I'll save that and then I'll show, let's see, the edit mode. So if we leave, I think I saved that. Come back in. And there's edit mode. It just defaults to the edit mode and then you can toggle to the preview. So those, those are the different modes, preview modes that ACF allows. So hopefully, yeah, I think I covered the basics of an ACF block. Um, we will, you know, I am definitely working with the team. I want to create a kind of a cornerstone ACF block with as much, you know, attributes and supports as possible to kind of demonstrate all the possibilities and have a baseline block um, for users to, to kind of keep coming back to and looking on how to, to use ACF blocks. That should be... I can't say when, but it's definitely something, a priority we're going to be working on. So I see Liam's in there in the chat. Any other questions that popped up, Sam? Uh, Elisa asked, uh, shouldn't the pattern be in a template? But I'm not 100% sure on the context of that. I'm not sure if you if you know. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm trying to think what pattern inside of a template. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, you could certainly, no, I don't, yeah, I don't, I, I, I tend to, patterns are kind of like a subcategory, or yeah, I'm not sure if I said that right. Patterns are kind of like a, a subcategory of, of templates or not even, uh, I don't, yeah, there's clarification here, Damon. Uh, wouldn't okay. you create a recipe page template and add the pattern there? No, um, because the pattern is really more about expediting the editorial experience and not the display per se, but not the front end um, final experience. If hopefully that answers the question. but feel free to drop a follow-up question if it did not. Um, if there, yeah, I guess if there are any other questions, um, I can, I'm certainly happy to explore some other areas, but it went way quicker than I thought today because, uh, yeah, it's just uh, mind blowing how far we've come with some of these tools. Um, and for those new to these tools, they're, they're very helpful. <laughs> So I guess I can give you a few minutes back if there aren't any other questions. Um, yeah, there's one last, thanks Sam for, there's one last poll. Uh, again, these polls help us gauge and uh, get a great pulse on how you're building and how you're using. So we can try to uh, formulate, you know, upcoming workshops to address any needs. Um, so if you can take the time to fill them out, we really appreciate it. Thanks to Sam and Ian and Liam for being available today. And thank you all for coming. And we'll put this recording up on YouTube and have a little post wrap up and share it, share it out there. You can also check out our WPE Builders Twitter, um, which I'm sure we'll, we'll tweet out when we have that available as well. So 
One other thing I'd mentioned, Damon, is that uh, next week, WP Engine is hosting this huge developer-centered event called Decode. And uh, I'll drop the link in the chat, but if you're interested in registering, that's where you would go to do that. There's tons of speakers. We're talking about all things WordPress, headless WordPress and block-based WordPress, everything. So really, really good. There's a ton of uh, awesome uh, sessions happening there as well. Yes. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, that's going to be great. And Matt Mullenweg and Matthias um, were just announced, which should be really fun and uh, engaging to see. So thanks, everybody. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and get out there and build. And let me know if you have any questions. Hit me up on Twitter. I'm D Cook. And <laughs>